everyone. Welcome to the weekly anime news for the week ending June 6th, 2020. A new setup today. Let's just dive right into it with uh, some news coming from Studio Ghibli this week. Very exciting. Um, we have learned that Studio Ghibli is working on a new anime film to premiere this winter. Interesting caveats on this. First off, uh, it's an adaptation of Diana Wynne Jones' Irig and the Witch, uh, very well known children's films or children's book. So continuing on that whole tradition, um, it will be uh, done not by Hayao Miyazaki, directed by Goro Miyazaki, Hayao's son, and produced all CG, just like Goro Miyazaki's earlier CG anime TV series, uh, Ronya the, Robber, the Robber's Daughter. I always get that mixed up. Ronya the Robber's Daughter. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, Suzuki is producing, as with everything, um, and it is basically an adaptation of that. Um, um, Suzuki talked a little bit about the plans for this. Um, uh, he said it, he was going to. It was interesting to um, think about making a Ghibli style movie post COVID nineteen, and what that would be like um, if people would just feel differently about um, how people should should behave after COVID nineteen. Um, he also um, did this interesting thing where he compared um, Earwig to Pippi Longstocking. But you might wonder, why on earth would they do that? Well, because Hayao Miyazaki tried for the longest time to make an anime adaptation of Pippi Longstocking and got turned down. And it was one of the big disappointments of his, his early career. Um, and so Suzuki noted that if Pippi Longstocking is the strongest girl in the world, which is what... Miyazaki had said and he'd, why he'd wanted to animate her. Earwig is the cleverest girl in the world. I think it's an interesting distinction. Um, he described her as cheeky yet somehow cute and said that if Earwig, um, if he was asked to describe Earwig as resembling anyone, it would be Goro Miyazaki himself. Aww. Apparently, uh, Goro Miyazaki became very self-conscious at that point, which I can understand. Um... So here's the, the, the question, and let's switch over to my fabulous co-anchor. Um, do you think, um, <clears throat> I mean, Ghibli's been kind of going back and forth for a while in terms of staff, in terms of how long it's taking to do uh, Hayao Miyazaki's next movie. Um, do you think it's wise for them to produce an all CG anime film in a year? Yep. Um, if you want to wait 20 years for a hand-drawn film, <laughs> you, can go, you can go ahead and do so. Mm -hmm. But I think as long as you've got a solid, 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 I can't emphasize that enough, script and all your screenwriting is, is right on mark, mm -hmm. it really won't matter whether it's CG or not. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think anybody is going to see a terrible product out of that. Fair and point. They are going to be committed to make sure that the CGI is is good. Mm -hmm. um, and then only a year? That's still going to be kind of pressed for time. And yeah, Charmy Sketch is just saying in, in the chat, and I think uh, they're right. I, I bet it's going to take longer than a year. I think they're that that's pushing it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's... Kudos to them for trying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you figure, as we had talked about Disney last week, um, Disney was struggling in their, uh, you know, native mm. animation studios to how to incorporate CGI, and the acquisition of Pixar solved that problem. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do with this, whether they are going to try and do it all in-house. Mm -hmm. And... There's going to be an awful learning curve on that, you know? Yeah. Well, the, uh, the, the thing is, they, they already did Ronya, and it looks great. Like, I've seen several episodes of that, and I have no complaints whatsoever. It looks like CGI, but it looks like, you know, it looks like Nino Kuni. It looks like, you know, CG done as a Studio Ghibli movie. Um, so it's like, I think they can do it. I'll just, I 
I'm very surprised that they have the, the technical capability to do it, and they're not farming parts of it out. Right. Well, they a, might be. Yeah. Who the hell knows? Good point. I'm, I, they probably are. Um, you know, <laughs> why wouldn't you? And I mean, especially when you're learning this stuff. I mean, granted, um, Miyazaki added some did some CGI back in Mononoke, um, but that was just little bits and pieces here and there to kind of make things easier. Um, yeah, kind of interesting. Um, I was going to say, when you've got access to, to Korean uh, production studios and even Chinese production studios that have, you know, really the, the ready, uh, prepared um, number crunching machines, mm-hmm. I mean, they, they've, they've got stuff that they can do there for you so that if you can provide them, you might not have to do as much work. Maybe that's what they're shooting at a year, is mm-hmm. that they're farming enough of it out that they're going to do some key sequencing and they're going to let the farmed materials sort of come in. They'll assemble it, and then I, who knows? There's a lot of risk in that as well. <laughs> you know? so. Absolutely. Um, um, okay, we're, we're trying to fiddle with audio here, folks. Let, let us know if uh, we can make that uh, any better. Um, meanwhile, um, good news from Makoto Shinkai. Um, Weathering with You came out in Japan on Blu-ray and DVD disc. I'm sorry, DVD. DVD disc is uh, duplicative. Um, it was the nothing. It, exactly. It was the overall uh, Blu-ray disc uh, n- uh, number one seller the week it came out. Fifty-nine thousand copies sold. The 4K Ultra HD was number two, and the DVD was number one with thirty-eight thousand eight hundred fifty-seven units sold. Um, all of them shipped on May twenty-seventh. Um, and um, uh, to give you an idea, uh, the Blu-ray and DVD editions of Your Name also ranked number one when they came out in 2017. Um, so yes, and man, we we can do one or the other. <laughs> so it's it's it, we we got to uh, kind of uh, figure out a uh, some middle ground here. Um, so the thing about Weathering with You is that it's been a um, um, you know Makoto Shinkai certainly on the up. Um, it's certainly gaining ground as a, uh, um, as a, if, let's be honest, successor to Hayao Miyazaki. Um, so this is certainly a, a, a good indicator that he's kind of on that trend as well of being just this person who makes a lot of money with his movies. They just, they just sell very well and whatever he does, he just, he can do. So I think it's a good thing. Now, I liked Weathering with You, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I so much pre- preferred a silent voice. Mm-hmm. If I was gonna, if I was going to sit down and someone said, "Okay, you've seen them both," you know, what uh, you you and you got to choose one. What are you going to choose? Mm-hmm. I got to go with a silent voice. I I felt much more emotionally connected with silent voice and what was going on in that than I did Weathering with You. I thought Weathering with You was beautiful. It was a, mm-hmm. it was a wonderful looking. It was very entertaining. Mm. I was not disappointed in it. Sure. I just didn't feel as engaged in it as mm. I did with a silent voice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, you know, maybe that's just that's me. I don't know what silent voice yeah. sold on day one copies because gosh knows whether you did well. <laughs> yeah. Four K Ultra. Gosh, that's got to be like amazing to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially a film like silent, like, like uh, weathering with you, all the intricacies yeah. of the rain. It's, gosh. Yeah. Um, moving on to some uh, crowdfunding news. I always like to notice crowdfunding stuff. Um, uh, so crowdfunding for, I'm going to murder this. Uh, Sinsky Vairoboki, I think, um, is a um, uh, Finnish book. Uh, Sphinx or Robot is the English translation. Um, and um, uh, this was released in Japan, uh, apparently quite successful. and. Uh, Anzu Kanye is a painter who is trying to raise about 91,000 U.S. dollars equivalent in, uh, in Japan, um, uh, or at least in yen, to get an, an anime version of this made. Now, given those numbers, we're probably talking like a, a short film, right? Not 90 minutes. Um, but um, here's hoping that that does um, pretty well. Um, now, did you say 91,000 yen or 91,000 U.S. dollars? 91,000 U.S. dollars. Thank goodness, because 91,000 yen <laughs> would be an incredibly short film. Yeah. <laughs> We're looking to produce two seconds of footage. Um, exactly. You got the opening credit and the end credit. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so 
So yeah, um, so here's hoping um, it's only it only raised uh, two thousand dollars as of uh, today. Um, so you know, still time to get there. But uh, uh, here's hoping. Uh, crowdfunding is definitely a big deal when it comes to um, to um, the anime industry. You know, it's it's a thing that could really help in a lot of ways. Um, but still, definitely an unproven process. Um, you know, it, it has not led to a a flood of uh, independent uh, animated f uh, works crowdfunded. So we'll see. Now, what's the studio attached to this? Th there is no studio attached to this that I know of. Interesting. So, because I, I, I would certainly see where crowdfunding, if you're trying to launch a studio, oh yeah, this might might be a good way to to get your you know foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Then you launch the crowdfunding, you release this, and you say, "Ha ha, here we are. Mm -hmm. We're the newest thing on the block." Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, moving on to some more sort of COVID-19 related stories, um, although uh, not negative, thankfully. Um, first talking about how the Digimon Adventure series, this is the reboot, remake of the original Digimon series, has announced they're gonna restart the series on June 7th. The idea is they had to go on a pause for, um, as a result of COVID-19. Uh, they'll be starting back up, and so they decided instead of starting back up in the middle, they're gonna restart June 7th, and then by the time they, they catch up to um, their sort of production schedule, then the production schedule will be sort of caught, caught up to them and they can kind of move forward and, um, and uh, continue on schedule. Um, so I think it's kind of a, a smart way of dealing with all these production setbacks of essentially saying, okay, we're just gonna restart our season in a sense um, in June and then just move forward at a regular pace uh, we also uh, learned this week that um, uh, Diary of Our Days of the Breakwater is doing the uh, same thing in July. So July 7th, they're going to restart from episode one, and then they'll just continue on doing and do the, the, the rest of the series all the way through to the end over the course of the summer. So that is the plan there, which I got to admit, you know, um, of all of the ways of handling it, I think that is a better way for fans, because fans can now go, go back in, remind themselves of the show, you know, re-familiarize themselves, and then, um, you know, just get back onto a regular schedule. Is the Digimon uh, reboot, that's the absolute complete reboot, same story, but remastered or actually oh, entirely reanimated? Reanimated from scratch, new story elements, the first episode's plot is completely different. Um, looks like the same sort of villain, um, and obviously the same characters in Digimon and so forth, but uh, yeah, it is a, a, a reboot. So it's Digimon for the new class of children who are going to buy Digimon stuff. Well, precisely. It, it, is, it is essentially, because Digimon has this weird um, thing where you know, most of its fandom is our folks who grew up watching Digimon, weirdly, um, it's basically how can we make something that um, will still appeal to that sort of hardcore fandom but is also kind of more relevant, if you will, for modern kids. Um, yeah. Something that is that is dealing with, so, and, I mean, the first episode, I don't think it's a spoiler to say the first episode, um, Digimon get into the train network and threaten to derail a train. Um, that uh, that um, uh, uh, Ty's uh, mother and sister are on, uh, so he has to very quickly <laughs> resolve that problem. Um, and so it's, it's that you know, kind of more relevant, you know, um, um, uh, not quite terrorism, but, you know, domestic, you know, domestic um, problems with infrastructure, that kind of stuff um, that you see more now than you did back then in terms of, um, you know, hacking, um, that kind of stuff um, is kind of... Okay, hold on. I, I swear I saw something where Ty, does he have a little brother? Uh, that's Matt. So Matt has a little brother. They're both on like laptops or something in in one mm. of the kids' rooms, mm -hmm. and they're trying to chase down a Digimon that's doing something. Is that all part somewhere of this? That is in one of the movies. Yes. Um, that is actually, why, I, why do I have that? Why have I even seen that? Because we watched that during OnCon. Ah, thank you. Good, <laughs> hooray! I'm they, not losing my mind. Uh, so as, yeah, as much. <laughs> And that was actually Ty and Izzy, another one of the kids. So I uh, just okay. keep years. 
Um, okay. I, I was because the more you were saying that, the more I'm thinking like, why do I paint this image in my head? <laughs> Not the usual voices. What's yeah, going on yeah. here? <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So it, very interesting to see where that goes. Um, I, I'll be honest. As somebody who I didn't grow up watching Digimon, but I, I definitely watched and enjoyed the show. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go and watch this and see what they do with it, just out of curiosity. Um, a sense of nostalgia. Yeah, exactly. And the, the nice thing is, it's not like pure nostalgia. It's it's also like, oh, they changed this, they changed that. Like, how are they how are they reworking it? Who knows? Um, also worth mentioning uh, the upcoming uh, Gundam Hathaway's Flash film did get delayed due to COVID nineteen. Um, I did not see a specific. Um, Date, you know, new opening date um, will be announced once it is decided. So we don't have a, a, a name there or a date there. Um, bring that up just primarily because um, Hathaway's Flash was a very um, um, well-known uh, Gundam novel um, and has been one of those things where Gundam fans for a long time have said, they should totally make an anime out of this. Uh, and they finally did, and now it's getting delayed. So it's kind of like, ah, you know. Um, that was that was unfortunate that we had that uh, that the, the delay on that. So it'll come out. I mean, they're they're pushing that. It's it's a, it's a big deal. Um, uh, for you Gundam fans, the it is the story of uh, Hathaway Noah, Bright Noah's son, uh, from uh, original Gundam, Captain Bright's son, um, who has a whole um, storyline that he gets involved in and um, ties in with some of the stuff that happens with uh, uh, with with Bright. And it's also complicated by the fact that that is, I believe. Um, Gundam Unicorn references Hathaway's Flash. Um, so, like, a previous Gundam anime has already referenced the events of this novel because it technically canon. Um, because it was so well known, they were like, let's, you know, throw in that into, into, the, into the story. So, folks are like really, really, you know, looking for that. Um, but, uh, so again, I'm sure it'll, it'll come out, but who knows when. Um, probably not too, too uh, far down the line. Um, let's move on to some tax evasion, shall we? What could be better? Let's move on from happy news to <laughs> criminal news. <laughs> so the Monichi Shinbun reported on Wednesday um, the, uh, that uh, you, uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this, UFO table, I assume, um, um, has, well, the, the, the founder, representative, director, and president, Hikaru Kondo, has been charged with violating the Corporation Tax Act and Consumption Tax Act um, because he, he didn't pay about 1.2 million US dollars in taxes, which is a, a fair amount. Um, a port, uh, apparently he hid about 30% of the proceeds from some of their anime-themed restaurants in Tokyo. Did you know UFO Table has anime-themed restaurants? Um, are they pop-up cafe things, or are they actual, like, full-on so year-round deals? The thing I'm seeing here shows an image that says UFO Table Cafe, like, above a, a physical location. I don't know. Um, oh. But uh, about 30% of that was uh, was hidden and stored in a private safe at his home, allegedly. Um, what makes this even... Oh. Worse. So it wasn't just like accidental. <laughs> Oops, I didn't carry a one. Uh -huh. I carried it home. Oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what makes this worse is that um, um, UFO Table is suspected, and I'm quoting from the uh, ANN article, of supposedly misappropriating funds raised from a charity auction for, for the 2011 Tohoku earthquake. Um, which is a violation of the penal code which, which carries prison time. Um, so that's, that's bad. <laughs> I'm, I shouldn't be laughing. Um, and, uh, now granted there was a, um, there was an investigation earlier, um, in March of, uh, March of last year, uh, which did not result in any charges being filed. Um, so there've been some, some stuff going on, but apparently now they kind of found it, well, certainly found enough to, uh, to charge. Um, Hikaru Kondo with that. Um, Kondo, by the way, resigned as chairman of the executive committee of the Tokushima event for which UFO Table was once the main organizer in May of 2019. No idea if that had any effect on this. Uh, for those wondering, UFO Table um, uh, did Demon Slayer, um, 
uh, much of the Fate franchise, Fate Zero, Fate Saint Night, and Raid works. Um, they're currently working on Heaven's Feel, um, which is of course delayed because of um, uh, COVID nineteen. Um, they also did uh, the Garden of Sinners adaptation and the Cuts of Geki. Um, so definitely, you know, one of the the bigger um, forces in the anime studio field at this point. But yeah, that's that's bad. Wonder how this is going to impact their their business going forward. Yeah. Is he going to be personally liable for for the safe full of cash at home, mm-hmm. or is the co- <laughs> is the company going to end up getting you know raked across the coals for what he's done? Yeah. Um, what's interesting is that again, according to the article, um, the prosecutor's office charged both the anime studio and Kondo. Oh boy. Um, so that implies this is not you know. Um, uh, well, I, don't, I shouldn't say it doesn't um, um, that it implies this, but um, they're certainly not going after just Kondo. For what? Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. What's that for? Good to the night again. Thank you. Um, um, which begs the question then: a even with uh, having filed a, an amended return, do they have the liquidity to be able to pay whatever mm. the appropriate fine is, and still keep funding production? So the lawyer representing Kondo, according to ANN, apologized to fans and the people involved on his behalf and asserted that Kondo already filed the credit tax return and paid the appropriate amount. Um, so, you know, that's what he says. Um, the, um, according to ANN, the reduced revenue that was stored in a private safe um, was allegedly altered in the company's ledger books for the years 2015, 2017, and 2018, um, concealing a total of uh, $4 million um, U.S. Um, uh, and then, you know, the, the, the tax on that was um, equivalent to um, uh, 1.2. 1.2. Yep. Um, wow. And apparently the, the unpaid tax money was used to, was, was funneled back into the business. Like, apparently this was, it wasn't, you know, Ferraris and trips to the Caribbean. Um, not, not that we know of. No, that, well, exactly. You know. Um, uh, but yeah. Um, so it's interesting because I think for a number of reasons. One being that I think the anime industry and anime series in particular are not seen as being the kinds of companies that do this, right? We 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 think of anime studios, I think, generally as scrappy little companies made of folks who are passionate about the anime industry and just want to make the anime and. They're, they may not be very good at business, but that's because they're not really paying attention. Um, so when we get a story of somebody like, again, allegedly, but you know, when we, when we when the story reports on somebody like deliberately carrying money home, that just really there's some cognitive dissonance there. I think for for me and, and other people. Oh, when every every anime shows that you know anime studios are constantly under the gun, they have no money. Mm. Um, um, when you know you talk about Tezuka and how you can produce something on a shoestring budget, and now everybody's you know hamstrung by that low budget yep. number. The idea that somebody would have money, actual money, more than like a couple of dollars mm-hmm. to take somewhere to put in a safe is amazing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, wow, you guys are doing something right. How'd you do it? Yeah, and that could be it, where they're basically saying, "Look, we can, you know, um, how do we stay in business?" Um, this is this is how. <laughs> um, and th- the other problem is this comes after um, um, Hideaki Anno's uh, accusations against the former president of Gainax um, and all of the the financial issues there. Um, so yeah, kind of kind of unfortunate that uh, we we hear that. Uh, gee, not everyone handles finances well. I wonder if this means now the Japanese taxing. Uh uh, uh, ministry is going to start looking around mm-hmm. a little bit more yeah. at what's going on and how exactly is that uh, theme park being uh, funded there? <laughs> Hi, Al. How's that, how's that happening? Where's that money coming from precisely? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny. I mean, with the whole thing about uh, Cool Japan and, you know, anime being such an important cultural export for Japan, I wonder if now there are more eyes on it, you know, and there are more folks saying, so how are you running that business? I wonder. Yeah. yeah. Well, any any 
taxing authority is going to uh, to want their share, like always. Mm-hmm. Totally. So if uh, if you know, if this shows them anything, it's it's thanks. You quotable, you folks, t- whatever the hell. It is. <laughs> um, thank thank you for spoiling the the ride for all of us. Yeah, because you're going to be under the gun. Exactly. Um, so let's move on to some happier news. Uh, the idol group Valkyrie within Macross Delta um, uh, released a single this past week, which released at number one on the Oricon weekly single chart for that week. This was the, the past week, the May 25th to 31st week. Um, this is the first time that group topped the ranking, um, which was... What, what is the, Oricon? Uh, so Oricon is an organization that charts um, um, music. Um, so, um, you know, they basically track sales of music. Okay. Um, and I believe I would have to dig more into that. But, uh, yes, that's where I've always heard, heard of them. Um, and, uh, yes, so um, now that it, it should be pointed out um, the, their debut album um, did go gold. Um, so it sold more than 100,000 copies back in 2016 when it came out. Um, and eventually it got the Recording Industry Association of Japan's Album of the Year Award. Wow. Which, dang. Um, uh, and this is for an anime that came out four years ago. Kind of, kind of remarkable that uh, you get uh, um, that much success out of, out of that group. And uh, yeah. You know? so it's been a real sleeper hit. It took four years to really gain enough steam. <laughs> Zach, apparently. Um, and speaking of sleeper hits, um, or things that are taking a while to get there, uh, we have more news about the Studio Ghibli Park, the uh, theme park. Um, there was a press conference uh, this week which uh, confirmed that they're going to break ground on that in July. So next month, they're going to break uh, ground, and the Ghibli Park will open in fall of 2022. So uh, we have a little while to wait, unfortunately. But um, uh, they did release some um, artwork. Now, this ar- artwork has already been um, uh, shown around a little bit, um, so this is not completely new. Um, but they, they showed artwork of um, various aspects of the park that they want to create, basically recreations of various um, parts of various Ghibli movies. There's going to be a um, uh, recreation of a, a sort of European uh, village area. There'll be a Princess Mononoke park with a rideable boar demon, because who doesn't want that? Um, and, uh, I just want to go to the buffet where all you can eat. So that, <laughs> just like spirited away, I can go from a person to a pig. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they'll recreate that. That would be hilarious. Um, Anytime you've ever been to a buffet, it happens every day. <laughs> well, this is, this is true. Um, so they said the, the Hill of Youth and the Dondoko Forest will open first. In fall of 2022, um, and I'm not sure off the top of my head which one those are because the um, Moronoke Village and the Witch Valley of Kiki's Delivery Service will open about a year later. Um, the um, ah okay, so the the Hill of Youth and uh, so the Dondoko Forest is the um, is my neighbor Totoro, so we'll have the Totoro area, and then Hill of Youth again. I'm not sure what that would be. Um, if Kiki and Mononoke are later, what would Hill of Youth be? Um, Spirited Away? I mean, it's... Uh, oh, so. you know, no, it's it's um, Howl's Moving Castle. Anyo. It's Howl's. Howl's Moving Castle, okay. Yeah, because yeah. they, they, they show a little thing here. In fact, I mean... Um, Ponyo, Ponyo's going to come in with the yeah. water ride. Yeah, there's, there's Howl's Castle right there. So, you know, um, that, that only makes sense. Um... So, yeah, so I wonder if it's gonna if it's going to like rock back and forth or actually like some yeah. kind of movement element to it. I mean, how are they? Is it just gonna be static and sit there? Yeah, I'm sure it's one of those things where they're like, let's try to make it move, and if not, oh well. Uh, <laughs> just put it on rails and have it revolve around the park mm, once every you know that'd be awesome. Hours. Hey, look, there it goes again. <laughs> um, they. Uh, project 1 million people annually will visit the first three areas to open, and then 1.8 million once all of it is open um, um, a year later. Uh, and they're adding 1,500 parking spaces um, uh, around it to accommodate all of those people, which I'm sure Miyazaki is thrilled by. Um, but, uh, you know, what can you do? 
Um, so yeah, that is um, uh, the, the Jimmy Park moving forward, which is always good to see. It's to be interesting to see what the returnability to it is. Yeah. You, know, you have you have people that go to Disneyland, Disney World, and they return year after year because it's not necessarily the rides themselves. It's the sort of entirely incorporated experience. Mm -hmm. So given all these movies, um, I would think you would have people that would be really sentimental about it. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen Howl's Moving Castle once. Mm. I've seen Kiki's Delivery Service once. You know, I've seen Spirited Away once. They were great, but you know, the returnability to that franchise, it's... Eh. Just saying. Just saying. Kids. I, I think kids will want to go back every single weekend. Because um, mm -hmm. kids like doing the same thing over and over and over again. Um, and so I think they'll bring their parents back, and that, that, that will make that happen. Um, and then hopefully that will... To the, point, to the point that their parents will freak out. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but hopefully then that'll create you know, nostalgia you know, with those kids that want to go back when they're older and so forth and so on. And I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, the park will expand. Now, they actually showed um, aerial f uh, footage of the, the, the spot where they're going to make the park. And it does not look like there's a lot of like, empty space around. This is not like Disneyland or Disney World where, where they're like, let's just buy up half the state of Florida for Disney World. Um, right. So um, that's going to be kind of a limiter, I'm sure. Um, on the other hand... I suspect they would not have a problem getting people to agree to sell their land to them for more space for a Ghibli park. Um, that would probably work pretty uh, um, pretty well. Um, all right, that is all the news for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next week.